Well, first of all, uh, I just want to uh, welcome everybody to our to our virtual preview day here at Iowa State University. And just sharing uh, Deanna's uh, um, sentiment, we very much wish you could be here with us uh, uh, in person today in Ames and here at Iowa State University. Um, it certainly has been a, a challenging a couple of weeks across the United States, but, uh, but also here at Iowa State in the College of Veterinary Medicine. But the really, really cool things during times of uncertainty and, and going through times like we are currently with COVID-19, what you really realize is how special a place we have here at Iowa State, uh, at the College of Veterinary Medicine, at Iowa State University, and our Ames community is everybody is pulling, pulling together, uh, working really, really hard to continue to meet the missions, missions of the College of Veterinary Medicine those missions of, of educating our students, of delivering services to our patients and clients in our hospital and our veterinary diagnostic lab, uh, of continuing to, to, to do research to answer important questions, and including important questions about COVID-19, uh, and, and then all the other things that we do as a College of Veterinary Medicine. So again, uh, welcome to our, our, our webinar today. And um, what I want to do with you is uh, just share a little bit of highlights about the College of Veterinary Medicine and then, uh, and then answer any specific questions that you might have for me. So Deanna, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, um, hopefully here. And uh, I hope everybody can, uh, can see my screen. Uh, Deanna, if you don't mind, if you could just come on and say, yep, I can see it and we're good. Yep, we're good. I can see it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Deanna. Yep. So, uh, so what I just really want to do is just share with you some points of pride about the College of Veterinary Medicine. And first of all, um, for those of you that don't know, I've been here at Iowa State for about one year. Uh, previous to that, and I saw there were several people from the state of Michigan. Uh, I was at Michigan State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. For all those folks from Michigan, a big shout out to you. Um, all right. All right, I'm trying to get things to advance here. All right, we'll try this. There we go. Whoops, that went clear to the end. All right. Okay, so um, one of the first points of pride for the College of Veterinary Medicine, if you didn't know that, uh, Iowa State's College of Veterinary Medicine is actually the oldest public College of Veterinary Medicine in the United States. In fact, this past year in 2019, we celebrated 140 years as a College of Veterinary Medicine. So that's 140 years of legacy, uh, serving society, training veterinarians, answering important research questions, and providing service to, to clients, not only here in the state of Iowa, but, but, but actually all around the United States. We're also among the best. So if you go to some of the common uh, uh, rating systems out there, you'll see that Iowa State ranks uh, in, in, the, in the top 10 in the United States. And if you actually look Across the world, uh, we're in the top 25 of all colleges of veterinary medicine around the world. We have state-of-the-art facilities. Um, and, and the two facilities pictured here uh, on your left is our Lloyd Veterinary Medical Center. The Lloyd Veterinary Medical Center is just about eight years old right now. It's a brand new, beautiful state-of-the-art facility that provides 24-7, uh, round-the-clock care, 365 days a year to to all kinds of animals, companion animals, uh, food producing animals, horses, you name it. Uh, we see those types of animals in, our, in both our small animal hospital as well as our large animal hospital year round. We also have a veterinary field service that, uh, that uh, takes our students out to surrounding clients, both uh, food producing uh, clients as well as equine clients. The picture on your right is a picture of our veterinary diagnostic lab that is currently going to be constructed starting uh, this fall in, uh, in the fall of 2020. The Veterinary Diagnostic Lab at Iowa State Unity University is, is recognized as one of the leading diagnostic lab, animal diagnostic labs in the world. And uh, our current facility uh, is located within the, within the College of Veterinary Medicine, but starting this fall, we're gonna be building a, a brand new facility that will be located right next to the College of Veterinary Medicine. So something that we're really looking forward to. Cost of education. So we all know that the cost of education uh, across all of higher education is a concern, and certainly within the veterinary medicine profession, it's certainly one of the things that we pay attention to and that, uh, that we're very much uh, cognizant of. I just wanted to share with you uh, where Iowa State 
uh, ranks with respects to all the College of Veterinary Medicine in the United States. And so what you and this what you're seeing here is a chart uh, for in-state or I'm sorry for non-resident education. Uh, this is the total cost of education. So this is the cost of uh, tuition, of fees, and then also the cost of living in the city of Ames. So for non-resident uh, uh, students, you'll see that uh, we are in the bottom third of, of all colleges of me veterinary medicine across the United States. The red line, uh, the red line, which is right, which is right here, is actually the average of all colleges of veterinary medicine. You can see that that we're substantially lower than the average cost of education of all colleges of veterinary medicine in the United States. If we look at uh, resident total cost of education, uh, the story gets uh, better. So when we look at total cost of education, we're the fourth lowest of all colleges of veterinary medicine in the United States. So we work hard to keep our cost of education low, but we also understand that we have to work hard on, on trying to support the cost of, uh, uh, cost of education in other ways. And one of the ways that we do this is through scholarships. And you're gonna have some discussions later about uh, financial aid, but we work hard to, to support and, and uh, bring in money to support scholarships uh, in our college. This past year, in the fall of 2019, we actually gave away uh, just over $1 million in scholarships to our students. Uh, and I have a stated goal that by 2023, uh, we, will, we will double that and actually, uh, and actually, hopefully, that's our goal, is to get to the point where we can give away $2 million in scholarships to our students to help offset that cost of education. Uh, one of the things I did want to point out is, is uh, uh, we certainly provide an excellent education to our students, and this this is uh, this is uh, um, uh, this is uh, um, illustrated by some some uh, recent uh, data from our class that just graduated in 2019, so last year. So if you look at the number of if you look at the number of employment offers that our student had. Um, or how many people were actually uh, had offers when they graduated. So 98% of our students had offers upon graduation in 2019. Uh, you can see the national average over here at 94%, which is very high, uh, but we were above that average. Our students on average that graduated in 2019 had 2.7 offers, so they had choices. Um, you know, they had multiple choices in deciding where they wanted to take an offer. And then most importantly is the starting salary. So for students that graduated in 2019, the average salary was just under $80,000. Uh, the national average salary uh, is just over $70,000. So I think this, all these things are, are very much reflective of the quality of the students, first of all, that we admit, number one, but also the quality of the education they get, which is then uh, recognized by the folks that, that hire our students once they graduate. Uh, we continue to be a leader in solving animal and public health problems through our, uh, through our research enterprises. And our research enterprises are focused on many, many things, uh, ranging from solving problems with production animals, such as pigs, to, uh, to uh, small animals, such as cats and dogs, through clinical trials. Um, the AMRI up here uh, is our National Institute of Antimicrobial Resistance Research and Education. So we are a leader in providing both uh, research as well as education around this important soci societal problem of antibiotic resistance. And we're also uh, ha have, a, have a leadership role in, in, uh, in vaccines. Uh, and this is mainly led to what's called our, our uh, uh, institute or our uh, Nano Vaccine Institute. And uh, this is really something that's really important even today as we think about COVID-19 and trying to come up with creative and cutting edge vaccines uh, to protect society, whether it's uh, humans or animals, against those uh, infectious diseases out there that lurk at every corner. Uh, we are committed to diversity and inclusion. Uh, uh, I would invite you to go to our diversity and inclusion page on, on our College of Veterinary Medicine website and learn about some of the programs that we are doing to to both increase diversity within our college, both within our faculty, staff, and, uh, and our, our student population, but most importantly, to make sure that they all are felt welcome and included within our community. Uh, one thing that I just wanted to point out um, is this gentleman down here in, your, in the lower right-hand corner, uh, Frederick Douglas Patterson. 
I would encourage you to go and learn a little bit about Frederick Douglass Patterson. Dr. Patterson was, a, was an alumni, a 1923 graduate of our College of Veterinary Medicine. He's actually one of the first uh, uh, African-American graduates of veterinary schools in the United States. But Dr. Patterson went on then to have a very distinguished career in, in higher education. And uh, just as, is, a, is, a, is a great example great example of some of the alumni that have graduated here from Iowa State University. So if you get a chance, uh, Google Frederick Douglass Patterson and learn a little bit more about his legacy, uh, both, to the, both to veterinary medicine as well as to uh, advancing diversity and inclusion within our profession. We also continue to have a commitment to wellness. We all understand how important uh, uh, wellness is to our profession. Uh, and, and we believe that the wellness in our profession starts right here in the College of Veterinary Medicine. So we're committed to doing things uh, to, to keep not only our student population well, but also our, uh, our staff and faculty uh, community, well as, uh, community well also. So just a few things uh, that are pictured here. Uh, so first of all, I'll just point out Dr. Uh, Lauren Young's right here. She is our she is our, our mental health uh, counselor that we have on board uh, uh, full-time here in the College of Veterinary Medicine. So she's available to help uh, all of our students uh, deal with some of the uh, mental health issues that, that, that often our students as well as our staff and faculty deal with. A lot of other things go on. This picture here, um, we, have a, we have an exercise room within our, uh, within our college where, where both students, faculty, and staff can go and, and uh, work off some of their their frustrations as well as uh, work in making sure that they are taking care of their physical wellness as well. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a room called the hideaway, which is, we have a room called the hideaway, which is, which is basically a, a wellness room where students can kind of escape and, and, and just kind of uh, relax without thinking about studying or some of the other stresses that come along uh, with, the, with the professional program. Uh, intramurals and sports is another important thing. So here's a picture of, of, of one of our uh, hockey teams. Uh, so a variety of things that we work hard to, to provide within our community to make sure that everybody uh, is well. And then the last thing that I just want to leave you with is that we have outstanding faculty, staff, and most importantly, students. Uh, this is really what makes our community great. It's what makes it so enjoyable for me to come to work every day and interact with our students, our staff, and our faculty. Uh, that's what makes, in my mind, Iowa State just an outstanding place to work and to learn. So with that, I'll end, and uh, I will be uh, sticking around for a little bit and will be more than happy to answer any questions. Deanna, I'm going to unshare my screen here real quick if I can figure out how to do that and then uh, turn it back over to you. Perfect, thank you, uh, Dr. Grooms. Uh, so there is one question about um, the counselors. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, so I know we have Lauren Young's. Um, what other kind of access do students have um, as far as multiple therapists and stuff like that? Sure, so it's a great question. So. So, uh, so we have uh, mental health counselors within the College of Veterinary Medicine that, that uh, our students can access through appointments and they're pretty much there. I, uh, I believe right now they're there four days a week. And then any times that our, our mental health counselors aren't actually in the College of Veterinary Medicine, our students also have access to mental health counselors uh, on main campus. Um, and, then, um, and then through those counselors, uh, they have access to lots of other mental health care uh, resources uh, in the Ames and broader community. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, as far as the questions and answers go, that's about it. Uh, so I wonder if we want to bring Dr. Danielson um, online and um, have him chat a little bit and then maybe you both can answer some questions right at the end of your session. Oh, all I right. Good morning, everybody. Deanna, can you hear me all right? Yes. Yep, I can hear you. Take it away. Great to be with you all. We're delighted to, uh, to have you here. I just want to say I wasn't able to get my cool Iowa State background working like uh, Dr. Grimm did, but I do want to show you all in your honor, I wore my Iowa State tie this morning. So 
Uh, we're just really delighted to, to be here with you this morning. I'm going to share my um, screen with you all. And Diana, or Diana, could you verify that that's sharing for me? Yep, I can see it. You're good. Perfect, thank you. So what I want to share with you all first is, is just a, a welcome, and then I, I want to spend the, the minutes that I've got here uh, before we go to questions and answers, just giving you an overview of uh, what admissions looks like here for the next uh, for the next little bit for you. So um, first, uh, this is uh, what our applicant pool looked like this year. Uh, great group of folks, including a bunch of you, um, 600 and, or 1,685 total, 145 Iowans, um, 23 from now. South North Dakota, 16 from South Dakota, 65 from Nebraska. We have contracts with those states. And then most of you are from other places. And I noticed here when I looked that we've got uh, people from Wyoming and Michigan and California and Minnesota. And of course our Iowans and Texas and Illinois and Virginia and uh, Wisconsin, I think I already mentioned, but uh, Pennsylvania, Florida, Massachusetts, Delaware. Uh, we're just uh, delighted to have all of you with us. Wherever you're from, we love students from there. We have a lot of students from a lot of places here at Iowa, at Iowa State, and they all bring great strength, great diversity, as Dr. Grimms mentioned, and they just make our, uh, they make our student body uh, stronger and our whole community stronger, frankly. The other night, neat thing about, uh, about you is, uh, is we have lots of lots of degrees and majors so many of you and uh, come from biology animal science zoology ecology those kinds of areas lots of chemistry and biochemistry but we also have people from uh, from areas like psychology business administration English liberal, liberal arts and studies and so forth and then we'll even get people applying with backgrounds like art and economics and Spanish and criminal justice and it's just uh, Whatever your background is, uh, you're welcome here and you bring and en enrich our, uh, our community. This is our average age range for you who are applying, and this is pretty typical what we'd see um, for applicants in any given year. Again, that contributes to, to the diversity of our student body. And these are the areas that of, uh, of interest that you have. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we are proud of at Iowa State as we produce practitioners who can go out and practice effectively in really any area that they want to. They get the, the basics, the nuts and bolts of, of understanding um, of veterinary medicine. They're well prepared to hit the ground running and, and then they go into whatever ever area they would like. Let me talk a little bit with you about um, <clears throat> applications and applicants this year and where we are. Um, at this point, we've made 169 offers. We've filled 55 seats. We uh, have uh, 45 that have told us they're going somewhere else, and then 69 that we're waiting uh, to hear back from. Uh, most of our Iowans are coming, and then as you can see below, we're, we're starting to have people from outside uh, who are committing to. Because the, the date to commit is April 15th, um, many of Many of our applicants in those for other schools are waiting and, and just uh, have been accepted to a variety of schools. Um, we have 69 seats that are still unclaimed. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what's what's going to come up next for the view of apply and are waiting to hear from us. Um, <clears throat> the due date nationwide for acceptance of offers is April 15th. And uh, that would be the postmark date for those who have received an offer to send their acceptances to us. Uh, we need to have accept, received your acceptance by April uh, 22nd. And uh, we would ask that when you send those, uh, send your acceptance, assuming you send it via mail, that we, that you use tracking, use registered mail or some other evidence that your, that your deposit was sent. Um, after April 22nd, uncommitted offers uh, are withdrawn and we start into our alternate list. Um, so 
those of you who are on the alternate list, um, please be watching the message board. We'll also reach out to you by phone and email to make sure that the message gets to you as quickly as we can get it to you, that a seat has opened up and that we're uh, offering you uh, that seat. Also, uh, Kathy Keel, who's our uh, coordinator of admissions, and many of you have probably met her asynchronously, uh, will let you know where you are on that list. We would ask that you continue to, mon to monitor our message board that's the way uh, that we uh, prefer to communicate with you. Obviously, if you send us email, our folks do our best to respond to every email they get. But as you can imagine, with so many applicants, emails can, can get lost or inadvertently go to clutter boxes or things like that. Uh, we'll always be watching that message board system. So your communication will be sure to get to us. Uh, and this is what uh, this is what that looks like. Obviously, that's you've all uh, seen that. So please keep an eye on that message board. <clears throat> that's where you'll see information about your status. Um, and again, we ask that you that you check it regularly. <clears throat> about that message board, you will, when we send you a message, um, receive an email that will uh, tell you you've got a message. But again, sometimes those emails might end up in, in your junk mail box. And so, uh, so please uh, log on and check the message board itself. Okay. I want to talk to you just a little bit if, if, you're, on the, uh, if you're on the alternate list. Sometimes people are, uh, feel like the alternate list means that they are that they aren't our top choice. The reality is when, when we, as an admissions committee, look at all of the applicants, we, uh, we will see a lot of applicants who we very much want here at Iowa State University. I'll, I uh, will often look at our applicants, like folks like you, and go, man, I wish we could just bring them all here. Uh, we only have 130 seats to offer. So we have to make the, the best decision we can, and there are lots of factors that contribute to that. <clears throat> but if you're an alternate, I just wanted to share you this share this uh, brief story with you about Apollo 13. You might have seen this Tom Hanks movie, which was this remarkable story about these astronauts who um, who went to the moon and, and they had technical trouble and barely made it back, and it was just this this intense and remarkable experience. Well, that particular uh, mission. Uh, had uh, Jack Swigert, Jim Lovell, and Fred Hayes were the were the crew, and Swigert was the back was the backup command module pilot. Um, at the last minute, he replaced Ken Mattingly, who was uh, exposed to German measles. So this was a this was a guy who was uh, who thought he was going to be on the ground, and then at the last minute, he was he was on his way to this to this flight. Well prepared, had all the expertise he needed. He was critical to the successful the success of that mission, and uh, and uh, and made helped to make it work. So if you're on the alternate list, that's the way we see you. We see you as highly prepared. We see you as someone we definitely want here at Iowa State, and uh, and uh, and we'll be very happy to have you uh, here with us. Um, <clears throat> so just continue to monitor the message board. Um, Preparing to come, um, you will receive an ISU ID number in your status page. And then uh, when you get here, uh, initially, you would uh, start registering for, for classes. I give you an, a URL, URL here that, can, uh, that you can click on and learn all about from our admissions page, uh, how to get started here at, at Iowa State. Um, <clears throat> The one thing I, other thing that I just wanted to tell you quickly about when you get here, and this will be perhaps difficult, actually you should be able to see this on your monitors just fine. But uh, this is what our first semester looks like when you show up here uh, in the fall. You can see that we have a, uh, a busy schedule for you every day. And what we do is a mixture of, uh, of presentations, face-to-face -face presentations by our, by our instructors, followed by labs. It's about 
So you spend a lot of time learning new content and then you spend a lot of time in labs applying that content. We try to get you uh, started with the basic science foundation that you need, but we also bring in some application from the very beginning. We have a clinical foundations course where you're actually working with animals, you're learning how to do physical exams. We have a clinical imaging course in which at the same time that you're learning, you're in the lab, you're learning the gross anatomy, you're doing dissections, you're in class learning the gross anatomy, and at the same time you're seeing what it looks like um, in, uh, on, in radiographs. So uh, we're very proud of what we do in terms of our curriculum and, uh, and what you're able to learn here, and uh, we get wonderful students who, who uh, benefit a lot from what we share. So. Um, with that, I will end my portion of the slideshow, and we have just a couple of minutes, uh, Deanna, to, uh, to answer the questions. That's perfect. Uh, thank you, Dr. Danielson. Um, so one of the questions we have in the um, Q&A section um, is about um, our exotics program. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, not just exotics, but how do students, um, you know, get kind of all, you know, how do they get a broad education and how are they able to kind of maybe access those interest points, um, whether it's exotics or lab animals or, you know, um, research, all of that kind of stuff. And maybe Dr. Grooms can, can jump on and, and kind of give input on that one too. Thank you, sure I will. Dr. Grimms, do you wanna start or do you want, I'll go ahead and start and then you can jump in. <clears throat> okay. Um, so um, the regarding the exotics program specifically, what we have uh, always provided is, is an exotics elective, multiple opportunities to go in the fourth year and engage with, uh, with exotic animals mostly in the, variety, in the um, area of preceptorships uh, at zoos and so forth. We also see some exotic uh, animals in our, own, um, in our own clinic. And so there are opportunities to learn about exotics here in our, in our, uh, in our own hospital. Um, <clears throat> and we don't anticipate that that will change. However, um, as Deanna mentioned, what, uh, an important thing as you're coming in to understand is that you won't graduate with your with your four-year degree as a specialist in an area particularly but what you'll have is a very strong solid foundation in the underlying uh, basic science you need to know the pathophysiology of disease medicine surgery and you'll have had experience with uh, major species areas. You'll, you'll have seen and worked with small animals, you'll have seen and worked with horses, you'll have seen and worked with ruminants, and, uh, and that will provide you with the foundation that you need to go forward and, and work in really uh, any area that you would like. Uh, that's a great question, and Dr. Grimms, I'll turn it over to you if you want to add to that. Dr. Danielson, and, and I would uh, I just uh, second what Dr. Danielson has said. You know, one of the cool things about our profession is that there are so many different areas that, uh, that our graduates can go into. And um, for many of us, myself included, what we originally thought we were gonna do isn't where we actually ended up. And, uh, and that's the great thing about our profession uh, is that, that we, uh, even after we graduate, there's so many opportunities to learn about different, uh, different types of medicine, different species, different areas of veterinary medicine. Uh, to, to help direct your career going forward. To Dr. Danielson's point, what, what we hope to do here in the College of Veterinary Medicine, and I think what all colleges of veterinary medicine hope to do, is really to create that strong foundation to build upon. You know, the, the strong basic, uh, basic uh, uh, physiology and anatomy, pharmacology, all the basicologies, and then build upon that the, the skills of problem solving and, and physical exams and all those things that are necessary to be that great veterinarian. And then as, as you develop over time, then that's when you start developing kind of your niche expertise, depending on where your career takes you. So really think about our goal is to really make you create that really, really strong, rock solid foundation that you can then build your career upon uh, once you graduate from. It. Thanks, Deanna. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, there's another question um, about kind of 
electives um, and what might be available for students as far as electives go? Great question. I see that from Megan. Um, and uh, Megan, there are lots of electives in our curriculum. In fact, um, people will, uh, <clears throat> some, sometimes uh, we, people will complain that we have too many. <laughs> I don't think we do. I think we have a great number of electives. Lots of opportunities, particularly you asked about food animal production or business management. We have uh, three electives, I believe, in, in business management. In fact, uh, Dr. Ramirez, who will be on in a few minutes, um, teaches several of those and can tell you more about those. Um, and then uh, certainly lots of areas of, of production animal medicine. I was a, you know, a part of the, really the heart of production animal medicine in, in our country. And if you want to learn about swine medicine or small ruminants or cattle or, you know, dairy, uh, beef cattle, dairy, uh, there are lots of opportunities here. Um, Fantastic. I, I think another uh, good question, uh, and I know that it'll be asked to for our, um, our faculty members and students that are on later, but if you can just, I know that we're wrapping up here, but um, if you could talk a little bit about um, faculty mentorship. Uh, so this question is from Taylor. Um, how available are professors to students? Can you kind of talk about from your perspective and Dr. Groom's perspective, you know, what does that look like? Yes, yeah, so I'll share my opinion, my thoughts here first real quick, Taylor. Thank you for a great question. I, I'm a huge fan of our faculty here at, at Iowa State, and I see them being remarkably available to students. Uh, they have office hours posted. They uh, love to have students come and, and sit down with them and ask them questions. And uh, they do do a lot of review sessions. Um, if, uh, if students need review sessions, the, the uh, faculty will plan it. They're, they're just very accessible. They're, they're here to teach and help you learn. Thank, and I'll just pop in there. Um, I, I'm, I am such a believer in mentorship. Um, part of the reasons I am where I am today is because of one of the faculty mentors I had where I graduated from veterinary school at uh, Ohio State University. Uh, Dr. Kent Hoblet, who was my faculty mentor, is now the dean at Mississippi State University. So if any of you get a chance to visit Mississippi State or are thinking about going there, the dean there was actually my mentor. And so uh, I understand the importance of faculty mentorship. I, at, even as the dean here at Iowa State, I have elected to serve as a faculty mentor for students uh, because it's so important. And I know, I know that uh, that uh, sentiment is shared broadly uh, amongst our faculty across Iowa State University. Yeah, I like that. She's an attractive lady. Great, fantastic. Thank you guys so much. I know, so I know it's uh, 1046, um, so I wanna be respectful of your time as well. Um, so thank you. If you have a few minutes and want to type answers in the Q&A box, um, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we will um, get students connected with you by email um, as well. It looks like a lot of the questions and answers that are coming in um, are, will be really great um, for our our faculty and student panel as well. Um, so with that, thank you very much, Dr. Danielson and Dr. Grooms. Um, thanks for joining us. And uh, we will probably see you by Zoom <laughs> shortly again. So thank you. Dr. Danielson, I'll let you answer the questions if you don't mind, because I have to go to a, another meeting here shortly. Yep, I'm happy to stick around and type answers to questions. And uh, thank you, Dan. It's great to be with everybody. Perfect. Thank you. And again, Deanna, just to everybody, thank you for coming and visiting with us today. And uh, uh, we hope you enjoy your virtual visit. Take care. <laughs>